Okay, so if you don't have a compression ring filer, you do not want to be doing this job. You need a compression ring filer, or there's another method you can put an actual file into a bench vise. So I'm going to show you both uh, methods, um, but you need you need a ring filer. So what you want to do, set your compression ring in there. Make sure that everything is nice and flush. You just want to cut in just like that just taking off a little bit of the edge as we go so as you can see here you can get a better angle so that's you can see the shaven metal right there coming off of my fingers yeah so we're just taking off a little bit off of the edges then also check that everything lines up flush and there's no kinks or any type of offset onto the angle so let's go back over to the block where we're gonna be measuring the gap to see if it is indeed achieved. Before I do that though, I like to throw some fresh compressed air onto the, the ring just to get rid of any type of um, leftover metal shavings on it. Then I clean it off with a microfiber and uh, kind of deeper the edges with a little file just to get the the sharp pieces off. I don't want to do it over the engine, so I'll just spread out the camera real quick. And boom. So now we're coming back in to check our end gap. Let's see if we actually achieve. I'm going to install it this way so you guys can see. So we got the top facing the top. You can see the mark that says top right here. There it is. Boom, top. So that's how we know that we're going this way. So install it just like that. I'm gonna grab a piston, make sure it sits nice and flush inside the block. Good. And we're gonna grab a fluid gauge. We're gonna be measuring 18 thousandths real quick. And now the 18 thousandths go through, but it goes through a little tight. We might need to do a little bit more filing. Let's check the 20,000s. 20,000s does not go through, and the 20,000s is gonna be our target goal. That's what we're trying to achieve. So now we might pull the compression ring, go back to the bench. I'm gonna show you the method of using the uh, file onto a bench vise if you do not have a ring filer. So here's my bench vise. Bring it up a little bit here. There you go. So I'm gonna show you how I do it. If you don't have a compression, so just wanna get yourself a nice file and lock the file into the bench vise. Then just hold it nice and precise and just kind of run it easily one side onto the bench vise and try to be perfectly straight as you can running this. So here we go. Just like that. There's really nothing to it. This is an old school way of doing it. And I've, had, I've never had any issues. Like I said though, you wanna be super careful and mindful that you hold it straight and not have the edges offset. So. I just gave it a little bit of filing and my edges look good. Now I'm just gonna grab a little file and kind of deburr the edge just to take off any type of little ridges that I might've created with filing. Yeah, I can feel it back here. You can, you can see it too, you can see that ridge. So you don't want that into the, the block. So get that ridge off there. I feel it with your fingers, now it's gone, so we're good. Get this one. Now we're gonna blow some compressed air on it. I'm trying to get it all clean. Then I'll be cleaning it down with a microfiber. Try to do this stuff away from the engine. So hopefully we've achieved um, 
or a target. As you can see, we didn't need too much firing on this ring. If it was a boosted application, then you'd need a lot more firing. Uh, and when I say boost, I mean like turbo or um, supercharged, pro-charged applications. So now we got it all clean, wiped up with the microfiber. Let's just go ahead and uh, install it real quick. Cool. Let's go ahead and kind of get it nice and square down into the board. Grab a fluid gauge. I'm gonna try to slide that 18 through there. To see if we can uh, we can get the 18. Oh yeah, 18 goes through nice and easy. But it's not all the way. I think we might need to do a little bit more filing. Let's try the 20. Yeah, the 20. 20 not going through. So we're gonna need to do a little bit more filing. And the reason I just take a little bit off at a time is that you wanna measure twice, cut once type of approach with these things because you don't wanna damage it. So I'm gonna go back over to the bench and I'm gonna be using the ring filer on this one, kind of to just get it all flush. So here we are back on the bench. I'm gonna come in like that. Everything centered. Just like that. So I like this method a little bit more because you're able to shave up both the edges at the same time. And I'm still checking that they're nice and flush together because you don't want them to be offset at all. Just a little at a time. I think that should do the trick. Oh yeah, that's nice and straight. Okay, now we're going back over to the air. Nope, before the air, <laughs> let's get let's get uh, the, the birds off, the edges off. Just like that. Too crazy. I'm feeling here to see if I can feel any ridges, anything like that. Yeah, we're good. Okay, let's go over to the air. This is just the process I take to do it. It's a little bit tedious. This is why I'm only shooting one. <laughs> Now, making sure that the compression ring is in the proper location. So that says top. So we're gonna be putting it this way. Like that. And we're gonna be running it down, just making sure it's nice and square. Feeler gauge, we're at 18. Nice, 18. Nice, so we are at 20. So as you can see, about the 20 thousandth of an inch right there. You can see the gap, bring it a little closer. See the gap? That just slides right through there. See that angle? So that's how you properly gap the compression ring. Let's move on to the bench and show you guys how to install the compression ring. Wait, let's not jump the gun here. Now, well, yeah, let's do that. So, get you up there. Okay, 
Where is your compression? Oh, it's the clock. Okay. Given that you have your piston already cleaned up and you always want to start with the bottom, what I did, I already installed the oil ring, which is that groovy ring in the middle, and these two rails up above it. I already pre-installed them and gap, uh, uh, phased them. So what you want to do, you want to make sure that the center portion of the ring rail is pointing up and that these two ends do not butt over each other, meaning overlap, you don't want that. Then of course the rails go on after that. When you put the bottom rail, you put the bottom rail first, make sure that the gap is offset to the intake um, right corner and the top of the oil ring rail, the gap here, should be on the opposite end of the intake relief port. Now, with the second compression ring, because you don't want to install the first one and then try to, because it won't go over. Uh, in this instance, if you don't have a, a ring separator, you can just spiral it on. It's not recommended, but I've done it so many times that I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident um, on how to do it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna find my other relief port. It's gonna be my exhaust relief port. I'm gonna set the groove. Make sure that your uh, compression ring, however, is facing the right location. That says top, so we're going to the top. So we're right here. Just wanna get it in there like that. It's gonna be a little tricky, but you can do it. So now I know it's in there, it's in there, right? And I know that my edges are deburred and I know that it's not gonna fall off. So. There we go. It's a little tricky, but you can do it. Okay. So now we're in and I'm just gonna spiral it around. Just like this. Here we go, so we're just gonna go in, spiraling, spiraling, and locking it in. So that's how you install your second compression ring. Just like that, and make sure the gap, the gap here is at the opposite end. So you don't ever want the gaps to line up. So let's go ahead and uh, measure our top compression ring. And usually these ones, they don't have any type of significant uh, indication to let you know where it's going top or bottom. Sometimes they have a dot, but these can literally be installed anyway. So let's go back to the block and check these clearances. Yeah. 